It's your favorite outdoor ed teacher, Bobcat here. Another video. When you think of raptors, dinosaurs probably come to mind. But the raptors we're gonna talk about today are birds of prey. To tell us some more about these amazing creatures, let's head over to Sierra Outdoor School's Raptor Center, where we're gonna meet our friends Badger and Gray Wolf. Let's go. Here we are. This is Sierra Outdoor School's Raptor Center. I think I see our friends over here. Hi, my name is Badger. Welcome to the Sierra Outdoor School Raptor Center. Here at our Raptor Center, we have five education animals. They are all non-re-releasable, which means they were injured in one way or another and wouldn't be able to survive in the wild. So we have them here to use as wildlife ambassadors so students can learn about raptors, how important they are to ecosystems, and about conservation of wildlife. Well, welcome to the Raptor Center here at Sierra Outdoor School. And you might ask yourself, what is a raptor? Well, the raptor is a bird of prey which has some very distinct characteristics. The raptors have a hooked beak, binocular vision, and talons. And I'm with our male great horned owl. The great horned owl is a very common owl to find in North America, found in many different environments and all throughout our continent. So a great horned owl has binocular vision and their eyes are fixed forward and they can't move their eyes without moving their head. However, they are capable of moving their head up to 270 degrees around. The great horned owl has the ability to see and hear much more acute than we do as humans, and which makes them very incredible and tenacious predators. Great horned owl has incredible talon strength. Um, let's say the average human's handshake could be up to 100 PSI, uh, force pressure. A great horned owl could exert up to 500 PSI. And um, let's just say that's twice as strong as a large dog's bite. One thing that makes the great horned owl such a great predator is its ability to fly silently. Thanks to the frilled ends of the owl's feathers, they are able to move through the air without creating noise. A great horned owl has amazing vision. An owl can spot its prey 100 yards up to 100 yards away. For instance, if this bird was perched on the goalpost at your local high school football field, it could possibly see a mouse in the grass across the other end of the field. A great horned owl is the most common owl found in California. It may be uh, prevalent in your neighborhood. You have a very hard time locating one as they fly silently. They hunt mostly at night. They're nocturnal animals and they'd rather not be seen. Hi, I'm Badger and I'm here with another special guest, our uh, education animal here, our uh, male turkey vulture. So right now what he's doing is he's preening. Uh, all birds preen, they adjust their feathers. Uh, as a turkey vulture, a lot of people think they're dirty birds because they're the janitor of the forest, scavenging, eating dead things. But he's a really clean animal. He'll constantly throughout the day preen and adjust his feathers just like that keep himself clean, fix his feathers, and put oil on them to keep them waterproof from a gland on his back. Now, one thing you can see about him is he has that bald head, they call it. No feathers on his head. And that allows him, on a hot day, helps him cool off. Birds can't sweat, so they need to have exposed skin as one way they can cool off. So he can cool off by that. If he's really hot, he'll pant like a dog and try to cool off that way, just like a dog does by panting. But you can see him here, he's adjusting those feathers. How he sees the word is by scent first. Very different from you and me, which see it by vision first. He experiences it by smell. 
If you look at his nose, when he brings his head back up, you'll see that you can see right through his nostril. The one, they both connect. And that allows him to have an excellent sense of smell. They say his sense of smell is magnitudes better than a dog. So that allows him to really find his preferred food, which is dead animals. Uh, they live in a flock, and you often see them in California uh, flying and gliding in the sky. A turkey vulture like this might fly between 200 and 300 miles a day looking for food. And by having big wings that can catch air and kind of glide versus flap, it allows him to conserve energy as he looks for that food. Uh, he'll pick up that, that food with his sense of smell. He'll spiral closer to the ground until he can visually see it. And often in California, if it's in the forest, you might see a flock of them spiraling around tree really trying to figure out where that dead animal is. And they'll eat it. So some people like to call them nature's recyclers. They'll eat that dead animal and they'll also help return nutrients to the soil. And leftovers they leave will feed a whole host of other animals in the forest. From rodents that might chew on the bones to other animals that might come and eat things that the vultures left behind. If you look there, you can see his big hook beak. It's like a pair of scissors. He can slice pieces off of meat off that animal. His talons aren't very strong because he isn't hunting like a hawk or owl and grabbing prey. He's finding it dead, landing by it, and using that beak. Uh, to help him do those things, you can see he has a surprisingly long neck. He has 14 vertebrae in his neck, so he can really reach around to clean himself, but really reach into an animal. Another thing he'll do on a hot day to cool off is he'll actually mute go to the bathroom on his legs. And that allows him to kind of cool off as that mute evaporates. It helps cool him off. Since he also eats you know, dead animals, that attracts other scavengers, including things like foxes or coyotes and other birds. And sometimes a turkey vulture at a kill site at this dead animal might be stressed by one of these animals that might be potentially aggressive to it. So unlike the owls that have great strong talons or like a hawk, one way to defend itself is actually by throwing up on its prey. It has a very acidic stomach acid. Uh, it's acidic enough that if you were a coyote and got that in your eye, that could definitely be quite painful. Now looking at this bird, some of you at home might think this bird weighs a lot. Sometimes when I show this bird to students or I have kids, when I ask how much it weighs, they're, they'll give me such dramatic answers like 60 pounds. But realistically, even though it's as big as maybe your dog at home, a, a turkey vulture is very lightweight. Depending on the time of year, this bird in my hand weighs between two and a half and three pounds. And that's because, like I said earlier, this bird has to fly. It needs to be lightweight. And you can see him open up his wings here a little bit. He has over a five foot wingspan. So that's almost my height is the width of his wings fully opened. And he needs to be able to conserve energy and fly great distances each day. So his bones are holler. He's very lightweight. So allow him to do that. Now, why are raptors important? For a lot of reasons. They affect their ecosystem in many different ways. Uh, this turkey vulture here, one way it affects its ecosystem, as I mentioned, is by being nature's janitor. By recycling the nutrients, helping recycle those nutrients that are dead animals back into the ecosystem. Uh, by removing a vector for pa potential pathogens. They're very important. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, leave the questions down below in the comment section. I will also leave links below so you can check out some things that you can do to help or learn some more about these amazing creatures. See you next week.